Hello and welcome to this film which is all about electrolysis. Um, we're going to be dealing with the electrolysis of molten and aqueous substance. We're going to start simple by dealing with the molten substances and hopefully by the end of this film you'll know what an electrolytic cell looks like and what key features it has and you'll also be able to predict what we would see happening when we electrolyze a substance and also explain what we see happening by writing half equations. Okay, so let's start off by looking at what an electrolytic cell looks like. Um, it's always got a power supply of some description that is forcing the electricity to go round the circuit. Okay, but in addition to that we've got two electrodes which can be made of various materials but we won't worry about what materials just for now. They just have to be conductors. Okay, and the We've got a circuit up here, which means to complete the circuit we must have something that is going to carry the electrical current between our two electrodes, and we call this thing an electrolyte. Now what sort of substances can carry an electrical charge in, what sort of, sort of bonding do we need? Well we have to have ionic bonds, and we have to be able to um, not only have ions that will carry the charge, but ions that can move. Okay, so there's two different ways of making these ions move. You can either melt your electrolytes, so this film deals with molten electrolytes, or you can dissolve your electrolyte in water, and then the solution becomes the electrolyte. And that's a little bit more complicated, and that's dealt with in the next film. So once we've melted our, electro uh, our ionic substance, the ions in it can move, and they become an electrolyte. The positive ions will want to move towards the negative terminal or towards the negative electrode. So we've plugged one electrode into the negative terminal of our battery. Positive ions, once they can move, will migrate towards this negative electrode. Negative ions will move towards the positive electrode. Okay, so this is what's going on in inside an electrolytic cell. We've got a movement of ions towards the two electrodes. Okay. Now, although you can think of the electrodes as being either positive or negative, it's most useful if you can remember that oxidation is always taking place at the anode, whereas reduction will always take place at the cathode. Um, why is this? Why is this a better way of thinking about it than positive and negative? Well, when you deal with electrochemical cells in year 12, this will still work, whereas the positive and negative thing won't. Okay? So, Reduction at the cathode, some people remember that RAC stands for reduction at the cathode. Okay, so in an electrolytic cell, positive ions are moving towards the negative electrode. Positive ions like to gain electrons, they like to be reduced. So positive ions move to the cathode and they gain electrons from it. Okay, where did those electrons come from? Well, negative ions move towards the anode. They lost electrons, they got oxidized, and those electrons that build up on this electrode then get sent round the circuit to the negative electrode where they get picked up by the positive ions which are gaining in electrons and being reduced. Okay, so there's the key features of an electrolytic cell and a sort of explanation of how they work. Let's have a look at a specific example of an electrolysis experiment. We're taking molten sod sodium chloride. Now remember, sodium chloride is an ionic substance, so it has quite a high melting point, so you wouldn't be able to do this at room temperature. You'd have to heat this container up so that your ions were able to move. You can see that this electrode has been connected to the negative terminal, so it's negative, and this one is positive because it's been connected to the positive terminal. We've got an electrolyte that contains sodium ions and chloride ions. Okay, so our electrolyte, uh, our electrolyte contains these two ions. It's always a good idea if you can think about what ions are in your electrolyte and where they'll go. So the positive ions will be attracted to that electrode. The chloride ions will be chloride ions will be attracted to the positive electrode. Which of these two ions will get oxidized? Remember, oxidation is at the anode. Well, it will be the ion with too many electrons. Okay, So chloride ions will lose electrons. They'll turn into chlorine atoms and they'll give up those electrons. 
Watch out, though, because chlorine exists as diatomic molecules, so you'd have to have two chloride ions and two electrons. Okay? So, in other words, by thinking about what ion is going to be oxidized and which electrode that will happen at, I can write a half equation for what is taking place at the anode. And if I think about which electrode these ions are going to go to, well, we can think we can say that this is going to happen at the positive electrode because the positive electrode attracts negative ions. What happens at the cathode? Well, reduction happens at the cathode. Now, I already know that it's going to be the sodium ion because I've dealt with the so with the chloride ions already. But let's think about which of these two ions would be reduced. Well, the one that wants to gain electrons, that's the positive ion. Can I write a half equation for this? Well, I should be able to. If I can't write these half equations, I need to go back and watch the film about writing half equations. Okay? Sodium ions gain an electron and become sodium metal. Okay. <clears throat> now, I could also combine these two half equations to get an overall equation. And I've also covered this before, so I should be able to do this by now. So I've got two sodium ions and two chloride ions and they're turning into two sodium atoms and a chlorine molecule. So that explains why we're forming sodium at one, electron, uh, one electrode and chlorine gas at the other. What would I observe taking place? Well, I'd see bubbles of a pale green gas appearing at this electrode, right? And I'd see molten sodium, because of this high temperature, I'd see a silvery liquid appearing at this electrode. So the sodium would form and it would form a liquid which would drip down to the bottom of the cell. Okay? So I've used the fact that I know what happens at the anode and the cathode and what ions I've got in my electrolyte to determine what half equations I'll see and what products will form in my electrolytic cell. And in addition to that, I'd be able to describe what I'd see happening because I now know what the products are. And I can look up what these products look like on my data sheet, most importantly. Okay, let's have a look at another example, this time without a diagram to show what's going on so we can just think about the principles involved. Okay, I've got molten magnesium bromide, so I've got what ions in my electrolyte? I've got Mg2 plus ions and I've got bromide ions. Okay, so they're my two ions that are present in the electrolyte. Oxidation is taking place at the anode. Reduction is taking place at the cathode. Which of these two ions will be oxidized? Well, it's the one with more than enough electrons, because oxidation is a loss of electrons. So bromide ions come along and they give up their electrons. In process, they're becoming bromine atoms, but bromine atoms don't hang around on their own. They're diatomic. So I'll have two electrons given up, two bromide ions, and the cathode, that's reduction, so that has to be something gaining electrons, Mg2+, plus, plus two electrons, forming magnesium. And again, I could combine these two half equations together to have two bromide ions, plus Mg2+, plus, two plus, turning into magnesium, and bromine. Okay, now... What observations would I make? Well, bromine gas is a red gas, so I'd expect to see bubbles of a red gas appearing. Okay, not just a red gas, but bubbles. Okay, what am I going to see for the magnesium? Well, this, like most metals, is a silvery substance, and it's going to be molten because of the high temperatures inside the electrolytic cell. Okay? So once again, by thinking about what's in my electrolyte, what's going to be oxidized and reduced, I can write half equations for the two processes occurring in the cell. Which electrodes are these going to happen at? Well, negative ions come to the positive electrode, positive ions go to the negative electrode, so I can predict which two electrodes, which of the electrodes these processes are going to occur at, and which electrode I'll see which observation at. Okay, so just to summarize what this what hopefully you've covered by now you know the key features of an electrolytic cell and what what is going on inside one in general and you can predict what products will form and what you'll see happening by writing half equations for the processes that occur at the two electrodes if any of it is unclear or if i've made any mistakes please come and see me and ask a few questions or 
Even better, post some comments on YouTube so that other people can see the answers to your questions.